safer here. I don't know how I feel about the newest Clint Eastwood, directed based on a true story film. The last one he did, I had nothing but praise. This one, on the other hand, I'm far more ambivalent. It's salvageable, but has one fatal flaw that I just can't bring myself to forgive. It's based on the true story of Richard Jewell. This security guard found the 1996 Olympic Park bomb, which began the evacuation of the concert venue it was hidden in. Before everyone got out safely, the bomb detonated, killing two and injuring over a hundred. It was another startling act of domestic terrorism only a year after Oklahoma City, and it could have been far worse if it weren't for Jewell's vigilance. But of course, the FBI investigation into the bombing started to look at Jewel as a possible suspect. Somehow that leaked to the press, and a local newspaper published the scoop. This dragged Jewel's name through the mud and became a national sensation. Being a portly 34-year-old Southerner who had a weird authoritarian streak that got him fired from a previous job, and was still living with his overprotective mother. So news media had a field day with it. One newspaper called him Bubba the Bomber. The negative coverage sent his life into a spiral, basically eliminating his ability to work or even really go outside his own home. It didn't help that Jewel was a bit of a law enforcement sycophant. He simply let the FBI harass him, even against his lawyer's advice. But after three months of this, Jewel was officially cleared. It took more bombings of two abortion clinics and a lesbian bar before the FBI finally did their job correctly and caught the actual bomber. If you couldn't tell from the clips I used in that explanation, this movie is pretty spot on when it comes to talking about Jewel and the FBI. It doesn't hold back. Instead of trying to make Jewel's sycophantic demeanor seem noble, Eastwood depicts him honestly as a guy with a good heart but a bit full of himself. He even shows a bit of Jewel's prominent homophobia, and the FBI is portrayed as going out of their way to deny evidence proving Jewel's innocence and continuously harassing the man, which is precisely what they did in reality. But there's flaws, some more serious than others. Now one thing is that it shows Jewel only having one lawyer, but by the time most of the lawyer scenes happen, Jewel actually had a team on his side composed of fairly competent professionals. So this lone man against the machine routine doesn't make sense in light of that fact, but I'm perfectly willing to chalk that up to character amalgamation and call it good. What I'm not so willing to deal with is the way they depict the reporter who wrote the first story about Jewel being assessed. Suspect. There is no reason to show Kathy Scruggs sleeping with an FBI agent to get the scoop. Her character even revels in attacking Jewel right in front of him and his mother. This is all made up by Eastwood. There's no evidence of her doing this, nor has anyone claimed it. How she got the scoop was that she was always buddy-buddy with the various local law enforcement groups in Atlanta. That's how she made a living. She was known as a bit of a wild child, sure, but considering she died young at the age of 42 in 2001, it's rather disingenuous to besmirch her name like this. Eastwood has done this before, for instance with the movie Sully, but that was more forgivable. When the Atlanta Journal-Constitution denounced this film, he doubled down on the imaginary story element. They could have told this story without making Scruggs into a harlot. After all, it's history. The story is right there for anyone skilled enough to tell it. She was a hot-headed journalist that jumped the gun and ruined Jewel's life. The fact is, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution ran this poor guy through the mud rather than independently verifying like good reporters should. But defaming Scruggs like this as if it's some sort of retaliation is simply terrible. Then again, she has a bit of a redemptive arc in this film, so showing that Scruggs came around to Jewel is a touching scene. But that's why I'm ambivalent on this one. I'm not willing to say it's a bad movie. It does reek of Eastwood's embrace of the current political trend of calling everything they dislike fake news. But in this case, the label sticks. Hell, even this channel has been called fake news any number of times. And yeah, it's fake news because it's not news, stupid. But that's the ignorance of our times. People who use the label to demean history are obviously fools. But in this case, the label of fake news sticks. I'm here for history, and whatever the political bias of Eastwood doesn't change the fact that he's a damn fine filmmaker. I just really can't get past the whole slander thing. But otherwise, it's yet another competent historical movie from one of the greats. 
Hopefully with that context, you, dear viewer, can be a bit more discerning of the nuanced issues this film faces yourself. Thank you.